So welcome, welcome everybody. This is a new human experience podcast. And today is April the 8th, 2021. Self-love. The topic for this evening is self-love. The theme for this month is oneness. And um, so, so why am I talking about self-love? Because when I start to think about and drill down and, and trying to get more, um, to know more about one, what oneness is and explore this concept of oneness, when the first level of oneness is really oneness within ourselves and um, and when I think about oneness within ourselves, then this, this thing about love, this thing about self-love has to come up because how can we be at one with ourselves if we don't love ourselves? So I am thinking of this, this topic in terms of if I were to explain to somebody that is maybe um, you know five years old or ten years old to meaning not not meaning that I'm, I'm this is who I am targeting but that if I can explain this first level of oneness to somebody in as simple of terms as someone who is only five years old or ten years old can understand then I know myself that I actually understand it myself so that's why I, I look at it from from that point of view and so the first level of oneness is oneness within ourselves so I start to explore what loving myself is what self-love is and if anyone asks me if I love myself I would of course say yes of course I do I mean, I, um, I do so many things for myself. I, 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 you know, take a bath so that I can clean myself, make sure that I have uh, clothes to wear, um, clean clothes, warm clothes, beautiful clothes. Um, and if I am trying to, to um, be, let's say, in a, a business setting, I would try to make sure that I have, you know, more appropriate clothes, clothes that are appropriate for the occasion so that I don't, um, so that I, I fit in. So, and so, and also I, I eat. I love cooking for myself. I love cooking for other people too, but I do love cooking for myself too. I you know, make sure that I um, create food that nourish my body, even though, of course, I would love French fries, but I don't eat that. I eat food that I know it's going to actually be good for my body. I would... Um, like there are so many things I do for myself. I have a roof over my head. I make sure the place I live has, you know, people that are nice to me. And um, I make sure the place is tidy enough. And all of those things, those are things that I do. And these are the, the things that I um, have learned and have been taught to me of the ways that I can take care of myself and show love for myself. So as far as I'm concerned, I love myself so very much. But on the other hand, when I started looking at this idea of self-love, there are also things that I, let's say, if I look at it at a deeper level, I can see the, I can see the the holes in, in my arguments to, the fact that I think I love myself or I believe I love myself. For example, um, I've known for a long time that you know having fluoride and all of these additives in in the water is not good for myself. But I I've still been drinking water from, you know, from that I haven't really 
um, done anything concrete to, to stop taking these toxins into my body. Until recently, I actually um, managed, I, I, I think I mentioned that I started, you know, uh, buying a, a water filter that is actually going to filter out all those or as much as possible, the, the things that are harmful to my body. So, and the other thing is, for example, the other day I was um, actually cleaning my, uh, doing some cleaning in, in my bathroom. And afterwards I felt so bad because I've been inhaling all these chemicals that I've been using without even thinking for the last, I don't know, for as long as I've been cleaning the, the, the bathroom. And it just dawned on me, how come I, I, I didn't think of um, getting something that is not as harmful to my body. And so like, oh, and then I started really thinking of the food that I eat. Yes, I, I do try to, to eat food that nourish my body, but then there are um, food that I eat that, um, well, I don't know whether it's good for my body or not, but it's just like food that I've been eating for such a long time and I'm still standing. So that's my, um, that's my argument that it has to be good for my body then if I'm still standing, if I, if I don't feel bad after I eat something, then that's my argument that it has to be good for my body. That's not necessarily the, uh, the case though. There are certain um, additives or certain um, pesticides that's being used in, in terms of growing you know, vegetables. They won't kill me or, or get me sick in, in just one meal, but long term, but really micro dose of these toxins will, will accumulate. So it's, it's like, I don't, um, the, the effect of these toxins is not something that is immediate. So those are the things that I don't look in terms of long-term. So there are so many things that I do for myself that I do simply because they, they have always been done that way. And I don't really even think of asking questions. I don't even think of researching. Is this the best thing for me? And, um, and also the way I, um, the way I take care of myself, the way my, my relationship with my body, all the things I do for myself is like, um, I'm doing these things for myself, not because I love myself, not just because I love myself. All right, a lot of things that I do for myself because I want a payback. So I wear clothes because I don't want to get sick. I eat um, certain food because I don't want to get ill. I don't want to feel pain. I expect my body to um, give me certain rewards if I treat it well. So there is, it's this, this love or what I think of as love is really something that is very conditional that, and because when I look at myself that it's like, I, I notice my, um, my faults more than I notice my, um, beauty. And a lot of the things that I do for myself is because I want a payback in some way. So when I look at it from that point of view, then my relationship with my body, it's, it's very conditional. The love is very conditional. And I can, and it actually just, it, one day it actually just hit me like a ton of bricks is that I have learned how to take care of myself, how to love myself in the inverted matrix. 
way. So in the inverted matrix way, how I love myself is I do like certain things. These, these are the things that I do. And all of it is, um, I would say, smells and reeks of inverted matrix kind of love. Is that it is conditional love. It is, I'm doing it not because I actually have a, um, a, a genuine relationship with myself. I'm doing it because I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to be sick. It's absolutely conditional. And I'm not saying that there is anything bad about that. That's what we have been taught. And that's what we know up until now. However, we are moving in the direction of fifth dimension. We are moving in the direction of oneness. When looking at self-love from the fifth dimension, what does that mean by loving myself? What does self-love mean in that way? And it, it occurred to me that I have no idea, absolutely no idea what self-love actually means when I'm not looking at a payback. What are some of the things that I do for my body? Not, I'm not even talking about someone else. I'm talking about my body. Um, yes, just, just my body, just, just my body is I'm, how is my relationship really is with my body? And when I started to think of that, um, I started to, well, nothing really came, came up. I, I don't know how to, I don't know what loving myself is like in the fifth dimension. So I do the, the one thing that I know how to do and that's meditation. And so, but it's a special kind of meditation that I started doing. And, and it really is, it's a silent meditation. What I mean by that is that I don't, um, I don't listen to a, any music. I don't listen to um, somebody's guidance. Um, there's nothing wrong with guidance, nothing wrong with music, but I just actually want to use this, this medium of meditation to spend time with myself, just me and my body nothing else and I um no no input from my senses I but of course um it may not be possible because sometimes there is there's certain smell in the house that lingers on for longer than I would like it to and there are um, traffic going by. I don't live in a um, um, deserted island. So yes, there are some noises. There are some sensual input, but I try to keep it to a minimum and to just spend time with myself. And so that's, that's the route that I take. And what I actually discovered is that um, I don't like it. <laughs> it is something that is so foreign to me that I, um, I spend as little time as I possibly can to not be with myself, even when I am by myself. And in my meditation, a lot of the times there are so many thoughts in my mind. It's like I'm addicted to all these thoughts, but these thoughts are, are really um, things that distract me. Uh, when I say thoughts, I don't mean, I mean thoughts of like, oh, okay, um, what am I gonna do later on after this meditation? Or, oh, okay, what, what am I going to do, talk about on in, in the podcast Thursday? So things like that. So when I'm just sitting by myself, 
trying, uh, emphasis on trying to meditate um, with no music, no, no distraction, no video, no whatever, to just be with myself. That is not easy. It's not something that is easy. That's why um, I've been doing as little or try to um, spend as little time as possible to be with myself. And so what I actually, um, and I, I persisted for a while, I persisted for a while until it actually, what actually happened was that I, my, my body helped, or I should say the energy helped me. The, the, the strong energy that's coming in really helped me by knocking me out. By um, my body is like shut down pretty much for for two, two day or two, and it is and and it is within those time this very recently that I really got it. I really and and when I when my body recovered, I actually was so appreciative of my body. That's when I really spend the time to be just with myself. Um, no input, no sensual input, nothing to see, nothing to, to hear, and minimal thoughts as well. Because I, I know how to get there. I've been learning this for a long time. It's just that most of the time, I'm so addicted to distracting myself. And, and for me, this is what the next level of uh, love, loving myself is like, is when you love someone, you spend time with them. And that's when it finally hit me, is how come so many people have such a problem with loving themselves is because they don't spend time with themselves. A lot of times um, we are by ourselves, but that does not mean that we are spending time with ourselves. A lot of the times, especially in this past um, over a year, a lot of the times we, we spend time by ourselves. But are we spending the time with ourselves or are we actually trying so hard, so hard to distract ourselves from being with ourselves? How can we love someone if we don't even know? We don't even spend time with them. How, we, how would you... How, how would you like it if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that um, you, you two are trying to have a relationship together, but they're always on the phone um, look, trying to distract themselves? Yes, they are with you, they're, or I should say they are next to you, but they're not with you. How does that facilitate love? No, it does not. This, the... Um, when I really looked into self-love, what self-love means for me, it's really to spend time with myself. Spend time just um, not by myself, but with myself. Just be with my body, not trying to get anything from my from my body I'm not trying to to get anything I just want to spend time for the sake of spending time with my body how often do I do that I'm trying my best to do more of that now and I'm starting to get to a deeper understanding of that and this really comes about because I made a um, I made a commitment to really start to activate my own DNA because I know that we 
like we have 12 strands of DNA, all um, contributed from different races. We inherited these tr um, tricks, or I should say, tr um, tr what's the word I'm looking for? We inherited these traits. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Traits and gifts from different cultures, different civilizations that's, that um, created us, created this body. And for the past um, 10,000 years, we've been surviving on a, like a, not even two, it's actually barely even, um, you know, 10% barely even 10% of our capability. That's why I wanted, I'm committed to, to start to reactivate that. And I, and I try to search ways to reactivate that, but actually the easiest way, the simplest way, it's, it's just spending time with my body, spending time, not even talking, but actually just being with, just observing. And this, this concept of being the observer, um, Franco talked, uh, um, I think a couple of years ago, he, he started talking about being the observer, being the observer. And Sifu Jane's talk is, is also very recently talking about being the observer. It's really when we become the observer and not trying to react to the senses, whatever it is that's coming in from the outside, is when we actually start to be the observer of ourselves, of our body, to actually be with ourselves and not trying to get anything not trying to to say oh okay i'm gonna you know feed you this food you, now you be good body you be nice to me and and don't make me feel bad which um was a lot of what we uh, our, our past relationship with our body is it says it's very conditional if we really are committed to going into the next dimension, then our relationship with our body, the way that we love ourselves, the way that we take care of ourselves has to shift as well. We cannot use what we have learned when we are in the, the, the way to, to love, the way to love ourselves, and also the way to love other people. We cannot take those concepts that we have learned from the, the, the inverted matrix while we were still in the inverted matrix. If we do the same, when we are moving into the fifth dimension, then we may never get there because it's that kind of thinking that kept us in this loop of being stuck in this inverted matrix. We have to actually be willing to let go of that. And it's, it's, not, it's not complicated, it's very simple. When you love someone, you spend time with them. So how much do you spend time with yourself? How much do you actually spend time to observe and be with yourself, to really be with yourself without needing a payback, without needing anything, okay, I give you this food now, you know, stay healthy without that kind of mentality. So that's really um, one of the, my biggest aha moment when I started dwelling more into what oneness actually is. Oneness is not just in the fifth dimension. It's also in the organic 
3D as well. It's just that we have very little experience of being in organic 3D. We have been in inverted matrix 3D, which is very different from the organic 3D. So oneness, oneness is within organic 3D, it's also within organic 5D. And even if you have no interest in moving into fifth dimension, in getting to know the spiritual part of you, but, but just being able to really love yourself, not just love yourself conditionally, but to actually learn to love yourself unconditionally. that already would be able to move you in the closer to oneness, oneness within yourself, being able to be with yourself and be okay with yourself, not needing any payback. You eat, not in front of the TV or in front of, your laptop trying to, you know, listen to or, or, or um, you know, a video, seeing some sort of video to distract yourself. But when you eat, when you actually feed yourself is to just be with the food and, and really enjoy every bite that you put in your mouth and actually observe how your body reacts to each bite of the food to actually savor each bite of food. How often do you do that? How often do anyone do that? Most of the time, I know I've done this um, very, like most of the time, that's what I do too, is when I eat, I make sure I have, um, you know, I, I would put on something comedy show, um, or I would look at um, cooking show to, to distract myself. I'm absolutely guilty of that. That just by me trying to distract myself is really telling me how I look at feeding myself. I remember um, I've actually been in workshop where what we've been, what we do is we, we eat a piece of um, good chocolate. That's, that's, I mean, it's not, not chocolate from cocoa, but like actually good chocolate that is made like homemade and with all the right ingredients. And what we do is we just, all of us take the time to enjoy every bite of that piece of chocolate. And that piece of chocolate was um, absolutely amazing. Like when that's, that's what can happen when we actually pay attention, when we eat, we're actually with ourselves. We're not trying to distract ourselves. I'm just gonna, you know, gulp this food in so that my body does not um, give me signals that I, I feel uncomfortable. So, and also when we um, do other things, when I put on clothes, what are the reasons that I put, that I, that I, I um, select these, this set of clothes in the morning rather than another set of clothes. Have you ever actually felt how this, this piece of clothing feels in your body? Does your body actually breathe and can move and actually feel comfortable and feel really satisfying and nurturing to yourself? Or do we just, you know, put clothes on because we want to look a certain way or do to impress ourselves or someone else? So these are the little tweaks 
that I have find really helps me to start on this journey of self-love to actually slow down and think about what what I'm doing how I'm where my mindset is when I'm with myself we can be by ourselves all life long but and not be with ourselves just like we can be married to, to someone for I don't know 40 50 years and not know them and not be with them and that's really the the training of um the inverted matrix we we miss we mistook doing things um as being with it's not exactly the same it is not and in this look at oneness and i really begin to realize that i cannot understand what oneness is with the mentality that i've been trained on from the inverted matrix that no wonder um oneness seems something that is so far-fetched because we we don't even know how to be with ourselves oneness really start from within and i am pretty sure maybe not 100 percent sure but from where i am right now oneness um starts from within and and oneness is simply self-love but the idea of self is just moving outwards as we get out of our own ego as we start to understand that we're not just this body we're not just mm, this little square space that i have in my um, that i called my home that this this one the the one that i love the one that i want to be with and to be at one with this one the the definition of one the real ultimate oneness is actually a redefinition of what we think of as one and when we want to really get to oneness the first thing we need to do is actually redefine what self-love is it's not about doing things it's about being being with and if i can stand to spend time with myself and not just doing my best to distract myself by um, entertaining all the thoughts all the soundtrack or all the 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 visual um entertainment when i can actually just be okay to be with myself to be at one with that me with that definition of one of what my definition of me is when i can get with that and unconditionally love that then that is the first level the first level of oneness i'm not there yet i have to be absolutely um honest i'm i have just actually found a crack in the door to get to that and that i'm just here to share what it is that has come to me so this is all i have for today <laughs>